Hey guys, I'm the 50s kid. This is my E46 BMW and I'm in the middle of diagnosing a random misfire situation with it. Um, I'm going to keep the diagnosis of that in a separate video. Um, in this video, I'm going to perform a compression test. Um, the my the problem the, the misfire problem has mostly been happening when the engine's cold once it warms up it kind of goes away so because of that i'm going to perform the compression test when the engine's cold normally you perform this test when the engine's warm when you've driven it uh, but because my problem's happening when it's cold I'm gonna do it when it's cold um, so yeah, a, a compression test is generally a good thing to perform on your engine, especially if you've never done it before. It's, it, it, it lets you see the, the general health of your engine. So uh, yeah, let's get started. So as you can see, I've already removed the microfilter housing and the two engine covers. If you don't know how to do that, check out my common repair steps video. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull off all the coils and we're going to pull out the spark plugs. They're just 10 mil bolts, all of them. You don't want to mix up your coils. In my particular situation, I believe I have a bad coil, so it's really important for me, especially since I'm doing a video and I'm still in the middle of it, to not mix up these coils. Otherwise my diagnosis is way off. Then we're going to pull out the spark plugs. So it's the same with plugs. You don't want to mix them up. So this is a compression tester kit. Basically we're going to screw one of these hoses down into the cylinder. You see it's got a rubber O-ring around it. And this is a good tester kit. You see how there's a Schrader valve right here in the, in the bottom of this hose, right where it goes into the spark plug hole? This is the kind of tester you wanna get. There are ones that uh, have the, the Schrader valve inside the gauge, and those ones are not gonna give accurate readings because you're, you're kinda of losing a bit of pressure once inside the hose there. So definitely get this kind get the good kind. I will show you the difference later on actually. I have one of those other ones that is bad. So we just go ahead and hook that up and put this in a place where you guys can see it. Now before we start cranking, we're going to pull the main relay so that no fuel gets squirted and no spark happens. Even though, we're, even though we've unplugged the coils, the spark part is really not much of a worry, but by pulling the DME, you can, the DME relay, you can just ensure that uh, the fuel injectors don't fire. This is the DME relay. Let's go ahead and pull that out. I'm going to put my foot down on the pedal all the way to open up the throttle plate all the way and then I'm going to crank it for six times until I hear the engine turn over six times. Uh, it's important to do this consistently for each cylinder. That was six. So you guys got to count that every time. So we got mm, 160 psi. Okay, let's release the pressure. Move this to cylinder number two. You notice that I only hand tightened this thing, you know, because A, you need to be able to get it out afterwards and it doesn't need to be super duper tight. You know, that O-ring is doing all the sealing. So just hand tight. Okay, there we've got 147. Here's number three. Hundred fifty. Number four. That's also 150. Here's number five. Hundred 
I'd say 147 again. And here's number six. So we're at, let's say 152. I just want to repeat this test on cylinder number one. And yeah, we still got really strong compression on number one, even, even better this time. 60, 167. Well, that's interesting. Well, ideally you want to see even compression across all the cylinders. Um, so I didn't want to find that I had one cylinder that was significantly higher than the others. But uh, what I was particularly looking for with this cold test was like a, a lack of compression on any of the cylinders, which I didn't find. They all have at least the minimum compression, even though it is pretty low. It's barely at the minimum specs. I believe the minimum is like 146, something like that. A, a good healthy engine, at least this engine, should have around, around 200 PSI. So uh, that's kind of a concern. I think what I'm going to do at this point is I'll just uh, put the spark plugs back in, the coils back in, let the engine warm up, and then I'll repeat this test and see what kind of numbers we get then. So before we proceed, I just wanted to show you what a bad compression gauge uh, looks like and what, and what it does. This is the Harbor Freight set. And you'll notice that this hose from it does not have a Schrader valve in it. The Schrader valve is inside of the gauge. It's right here. So let's just test cylinder number one and compare readings. That's pretty telling. What is that, 130? Yeah, that's why you don't want to use a Harbor Freight compression gauge. All right, we're just gonna let that guy warm up. Okay, we're gonna repeat our test. This is cylinder number one. What is that, 150? I guess that's 160. 160, so we went down a little bit. So I'll just do the other five cylinders. You guys don't need to see that. We'll just come back to the results afterwards. So these are the numbers that I'm seeing. Um, I was honestly hoping for better. 146, I believe, is the minimum. You can see in some cases we get, we're getting below that. So, you know, I mean, th this engine's pretty tired. Although, honestly, it doesn't feel tired at all, or at least to me, it's, it's still very fast. And um, I, I don't really notice many problems with it drive, driving-wise. Um, then again, I haven't owned the car since it was new. So I'm obviously leaving a lot of ponies on the table, and I, have, I, I don't even realize it. Anyway, uh, I'm a little concerned that cylinder one is showing, at, you know, almost 20% or 20 PSI higher than the other cylinders. You really want to see consistency between all the cylinders, so that's kind of an issue. Uh, but, you know, for 175,000 miles, what more can you really expect, right? You'll notice here that we are showing different numbers between the hot and the cold test. You can see that these, uh, I, the hot numbers are more realistic for what your actual compression is, and that is why they tell you to do it when hot. One thing you can do at this point is you can pour about a tablespoon of oil down the cylinders and repeat the test. That's called a wet compression test. And if your piston rings aren't sealing, the oil will help them to seal a little bit better during the test. And if you do see higher PSI numbers, then you, that, then you have confirmed that your piston rings aren't sealing properly. Uh, but if I do that and I help my piston rings to seal properly, I'm not gonna get good test results when I run a cylinder leak down test, which is what I'm gonna do next. So I, I, I don't wanna skew the results of my cylinder leak down test, so I'm not gonna perform a wet compression test. Anyway. So that is how to perform a compression test on an E46 BMW. This actually applies to all cars, the exact same procedure for all cars. Um, I am going to perform a cylinder leak down test next, but I will probably put that in a separate video just because this one's probably getting a little too long. Uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, please consider subscribing. I'm the 50s kid. Thanks a lot for watching.